1920, Cleveland was the fifth largest city in the United States. At that time, there was no radio or no television. Live entertainment was the equivalent of major television networks of today. In this short film, I will show that this history of the urban revitalization is relevant today because its contribution illustrates Plano Square's role as an anchor for downtown Cleveland and its ability to attract people and investment to the urban core. Playhouse Square in downtown Cleveland, Ohio is the world's largest theater restoration project and the country's largest performing arts center outside New York City, eclipsed only by Lincoln Square, as well as Northeast Ohio's home for touring, Broadway shows, concerts, comedy, opera, dance, and children's programs. Playhouse Square's original five venues, the Ohio, Palace, State, Allen, and Hannah Theater, were constructed in the 1920s and a mere 19 months. Impacted by the rise of television and population flight to suburbia, by 1968 through 69, all but the Hannah were ev eventually boarded up, as entertainment also moved to the suburbs. Grandpa gave me a quarter and his, uh, his rapid transit pass, which was worth 25 cents, uh, to go down and see the magician Houdini. And I went all by myself in junior high, down to the terminal, walked up to the palace. I sat in the front row of the balcony, of course, where all the kids would s sit, you know. I remember his sawing a woman in half, things like that. Cleveland's ability to prosper on the basis of 19th century achievements came to an end in the 1960s. Its fourth period of economic development, which lasted from early 1960 through the 80s, was one of painful stagnation. The Palace Theater, you'd have a first run movie and a big band. The big bands were all here, they'd always come here. Glenn Miller, you, you name them, Tommy Dorsey, Jimmy Dorsey. Uh, all those big bands would come and they'd play for a week. So you'd see a first run movie and a big band. I used to love to go down there. Oh yeah, I'd go down there all the time. Manufacturing employment peaked in 1969 then declined until one-third of manufacturing jobs were gone by the early 1980s. The success of Cleveland unions in raising workers' incomes also meant that Cleveland area employers had to deal with higher numbers of days lost to work stoppages and higher labor costs than most of their competitors in the U.S. This was at a time when foreign competitors enjoyed labor costs that were much lower still. The economic decline that disabled the downtown Cleveland area in the 1960s took no prisoners as the Playhouse Square was all boarded up and out of commission by 1969. But in the 70s, a grassroots effort saved the historic venues from the wrecking ball, restoring and reopening the theaters one by one, ushering in a new area of downtown revitalization which was heralded by the media as one of the top 10 successes in Cleveland history.
theaters closed in late 68, early 69. During 1970, I think sometime, Ray Shepardson, who was working for the school board then, was in the theaters looking for a place to hold a teacher's meeting. And he fell in love with them. He just decided somebody had to save those theaters and it was going to be him. On a parallel time track, uh, summer of 1972, Berea Summer Theater did Jacques Brel is Alive and Well and Living in Paris. Jacques Brel was a Belgian poet and folk singer, and you know, we're talking back in the time of hippies and free love, and poetry was cool, and, and uh, beatniks, and all of that kind of stuff. The show was a musical review of Brel's songs and Brel's poetry set to other people's music. It was running off Broadway at that time. Joe Gary was the director. Legend has it that uh, Ray and Joe met and uh, Ray said, uh, I'd like to do this show at my cabaret at Playhouse Square, to which Joe said, I didn't know you had a cabaret, and Ray said, well, I will. The idea was, uh, we're going to try this show out for, I think it was three weeks, and see if anybody shows up. People came for three weeks, they came for three months, they came for two and a half years. So it became the show that saved the theaters. Arts and entertainment venues are part of the amenity package that cities offer to residents and visitors. A strong arts and culture scene helps retain existing levels of visitation, population, and employment. It helps to attract new employees, residents, and visitors. The emphasis on arts and culture as tools for economic development has enjoyed renewed interest as quality of life has become a prime factor and the location choices made by individuals and businesses. Playhouse Square is a unique asset in the greater Cleveland area. With more than a million tickets sold each year and the ability to attract a diverse audience, Playhouse Square provides a continuous draw to the area and constitutes a solid anchor for Cleveland. Despite the fact that Northeast Ohio's region has not grown, the number of Playhouse Square patrons increased by 22% in 1995. The share of the regional population who come downtown because of Playhouse Square has increased over time. Playhouse Square Credited with reviving a portion of downtown Cleveland, has served as a national model for capitalizing on cultural assets to transform inner cities. Playhouse Square took the lead in redeveloping the district when others were hesitant. The Playhouse Square Foundation recognizes the potential that exists in the theater and through its holding companies has invested in several properties in the immediate area. Although development of the theater district didn't change the physical separation of Cleveland's major attractions, it tied together three important downtown Playhouse Square, Gateway, and East Fourth Street. The real economic value of Playhouse Square lies in the resurgence that was initiated in the theater district. Playhouse Square not been preserved and enhanced, it is possible that even more economic activity would have been